Welcome back to this dot podcast. This is the second half of this brilliant event that has been hosted by us and Hillside Barbers. Uh, you can catch Hillside Barbers again at 2847 Fairfax. Make sure you come by, get a fresh cut. And when you get a fresh cut, you know, you can hop in them DMs and hit the baddie with the WWYD. <laughs> Ain't that what you do? Hey, no, Ain't that I, what y'all do? I, hey, I, 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 dro- I drop on the DM and ask if they get ball cuts. <laughs> <laughs> we was hitting them up on Black Planet cold, cold back cuts. in our day. You cold cuts? <laughs> cold cuts and ball cuts. <laughs> <laughs> but this second half, we are focused on my man Rodney Billups stick leader in the community and the love of park hill man like he's a park hillian he's been there for the duke Duke. thank you i knew it was out there the duke i remember me and rodney definitely go back because him and mike were tight my brother mike and he would come over and spend a night and that would be some some wild nights like (laughs) Sure. No, for real, we would be back in the alley because we had a hoop, and it'd be dark, but we'd be out there getting it. And this, this dude's talent, I mean, is, we, we don't even have to talk about it because we, we know what it is. But, yeah, we go back, man, and it's exciting to have you on the show because we've been, yeah, we've been wanting it. Tell, tell him how hard it was to get him, though. He's hard to book. He is hard to book. He's a busy man. That's he's not the truth, guys. That's well, not he's the truth. A, come on. That's not the truth. He's you just had a baby. Now. Like I'm, you got a family. I'm always on you, time, you, though. You 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 are you part of the court. I'm, all, I'm no, always on time. No, you're on time, but stick like for real. Like yeah. Courtney, how long would it take to book? It wasn't me. Yeah. It, it. To Rodney's credit. Okay. Nah, don't be nice. Don't be nice. Nah, I'm always. We out here telling. We need to tell the truth, man. I I gotta. I gotta keep it real. Sean, the focus was always you. Okay. So we we were always going to move at your pace. So whenever we had conversations about it, it, what I tell you, I said, Sean, whenever you're ready, we gonna do it, right? I know I probably could have called Rodney and been like, yo. Or texting like, yo, you know what I mean? Let's let's go oh, ahead and do so it. Wait, wait, wait. It, so it's my fault? Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. You can't say it's your no. fault, but it's your fault. I'm not. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's your no, fault, no, 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 no. It ain't my fault. No. <laughs> I'm not saying. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm saying we were moving this at your pace. Oh, so, so I I was sliding my I was sliding. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Well, what is it? Defense? Like, was yeah. I slide? I wasn't moving my feet fast yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I got so, beat. Did I get beat? We were waiting on your timeline. Yeah, you know. Got yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, pump fake. Pump fake, and we were supposed Ooh. to stay on our feet, and we were just jumping all over. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Now we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put our hands up. Yeah. Yeah. Nice did, I, did, I so I yeah. did I did I dip up under you? Did I did dip up under though? Uh. <laughs> but you were smooth though. Stick. Glad to have you on the show, and I think for you, a great place to start is you just telling. Let's get your story out there, all right? Because I think it's a great story, and. I don't want to tell it. I want you to tell it, right? Because your upbringing, and we, we're, we're talking about basketball, right? But I think it's so much more of like what you've accomplished because of course you cold-blooded on the basketball court, but you have went to one of the most prestigious schools in the country, not let alone Colorado, but in the country. And we're talking about Denver University, right? Getting your... I think you got your business degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's one of the best schools that you can go to for that. And I want to kind of lead up into that. So let's start there. Is that cool? You're just talking about, you know, DU Mm -hmm. and like, let's talk about Park Hill and then go to college and then beyond. So Park Hill and kind of what it's meant to you growing up. It's it's everything. It's For me, Park Hill is... It's nothing short of, of a blessing, right? And 
when I got to DU, I didn't know any better. Like, I, like everything I saw in Park Hill was life. Like, you know, we, we grew up on Poplar, and from Poplar to probably Glencoe, or, or even further down to Elm, like, we had family members on every other block. So from a young age, we'd walk from Quebec Street to Holly, where the rec center is, and everybody's outside checking, making sure we're walking. Like, it was, like, our community was so tight and so small. And to Sean's point in the last segment, it's like, it, 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 it's, it's been my village. Like, it's, it's, taken, it's taken, you know, 18 years of that development of me being at home and, and having two parents, which not all, everybody in Park Hill had. We were fortunate to have two parents, but having Uncle Herman as another parent, having Kearney as another parent, Miss Kane as another parent, Sean and they family, my door, like we've had, I've had so many mentors in this, this small little intersection of Denver. It's, it's been crazy. So, like I still live that way. Like I, still. I'm calling everybody I know for advice now that I'm a, a new parent. My son is 15 months. I'm, I'm trying to get advice on everything from, you know, putting a nipple on the bottle to, <laughs> to tying up his shoes. Now he's wearing shoes. So, and, and I got that mentality from just growing up in Park Hill, in, in our hood. And speaking of that, so, and congratulations on the newborn, 15 months. Appreciate uh, handsome that. fella. Uh, he was on the conference call with us the other he day. He looked like my, my wife. He don't look nothing like me. When he was <laughs> handsome, he don't look like me. He looked like my wife. He put in that work. It was yeah. like. <laughs> I did my job. I got a boy, so I'm good. Well, tell us a little bit about that of like how, you know, now that you're in fatherhood of like how how that shows up for you now, like in your everyday life and how do you look at things maybe from a different lens? So I, I, I guess before that, I kind of sped past the last question about my experience at DU. Yeah. So I feel like I grew up there, right? Like I, I finally became like this young man into a man because growing up in Park Hill, all you see is black folks. Like in our house, how yeah. we talk, what we watch, yep. like who we interact with was all black. Yeah. Right. So now going to this prestigious university where we knew nothing about, we only knew that it was on Evanston University. That's it. Like That's we, it. we didn't know nothing about no DU. And no Hoyt Brown. That was it. Like we didn't That's know the only anything time we about went to DU. School. We just knew that it was expensive and it was all white. It was a country club. Yeah. So when I got there on campus, it was culture shock. Like it was, like there was, I was the only one in my classes that looked like me, talked like me, sound like me. I had the only one, I was the only one with the interest of things that I like around me. Right. And at the time it was, it was probably 45, maybe, maybe 50 black students on campus. Wow. On the entire wow. campus. On the enti there's only 80 now. Wow. Like let, let, that was 2002 to 2005. Now coming back full circle as the head coach, it was 80. It was 80, well, my first year in like 86, the, the, the last year I was there. That's crazy. So I, I had to adjust quickly. Like I had to learn how to, how to function and navigate through this space. And very quickly, I was uncomfortable. Like I had to like be able to, to live in this uncomfortable space and learn how to do it. Like I, you know, I came from coaching like Uncle Herman, where like you do as you're told. Like Absolutely. There, was, there was no, there was no negotiation. It was your do as you're told. To now this community where these these kids these affluent white kids are having what they want saying what they want doing what they want like it was very different for me so and that's now that's a great point that you bring up because that is is very different because we all come from that era of like you usually don't you do as you're told right you don't question the coach and it's like the coach knows best now you go into this different culture where it's not like that and it's like now there's a conversation and a negotiation that goes into it or you're taking it from an aspect where let me dive into your motivators let me try to align you to do the best that you can do possible for an athlete or you know whatever it is when you're coaching how did you find that because you just mentioned like your culture was like yo whatever the coach told me that made you coachable now you're dealing with kids that don't operate like that what did you do or what did you learn 
to learn that type of skill or coach that? I don't know player? that I, I learned that there. Like, and, and let me break that down. Like, when I figured that that basketball was just my tool, things shift for me. Like, yeah, I grew up under Chance. I was Chance's biggest fan. Like, he was seven years older than me, so I didn't ever play with him. Like, when he became old enough to go to the clubs, I never saw him. Like, when he got his celebrity, like, I, Chance and I weren't friends until I became an adult, right? Right. So I say that to say, like, once I got off the NBA dreams and, like, became, like, a person of my own professional development, and started using basketball as a tool, that's when things like became crystal clear. And in, in it becoming clear, that's when like I started to learn how to, how to navigate conversation and get things, like get what I wanted out of people and get like be able to motivate not only myself through conversation, but motivate other people. Um, and that's when the, the teaching, of, like the teaching that I am now or a teacher that I am now or a coach that I am now, that's where that came from. And just being able to use shit as a tool. Like it everything there's value in everything. <clears throat> and I try to I try to give that same value through conversation with whoever it is. Hey stick. So I, I love the what you said about um let's talk about the easy road. But Damon, Damon real quick. Uh huh. Don't get lost in the bedroom eyes. You got bedroom eyes, so just don't stare <laughs> in the eyes. Just talk. I went. I was looking over there. <laughs> hey, so let's talk about the easy route. The easy route is my brother is so 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 and so. You said I'm not taking the easy road. I'm taking the road less traveled to build my own path. My road. Yeah, to build my own legacy. Um, I appreciate that. And I think a lot of people appreciate that. What was the light bulb moment that like came to you that said, I'm gonna take my own way? No, there there wasn't a there was a conversation. It wasn't a light bulb. So Chance, I was fourteen, Chance got drafted to Boston. And for that season, he had a hell of a season, right? Like, got traded in the middle of the year, he played for Patino, he was stressed out. I never really again never really got the chance to talk to him. He comes home that summer and like, I'm thinking it's good. Like I'm thinking we got new money in the family. Like everything is different. The conversation, and, and this is not verbatim, but the conversation was like, this is my money, bro. Like, this is what I did. This is what I deserve. I'm getting this, this ain't for you. Like you gotta work your own, like you gotta make your own life. I was 14 when that conversation happened. Mm. And that's when that, like, everything for me was like, all right, shit, I got to get it. But, that, but that's just our family. Like, yeah. that's, like, that started well before that. That started when Sean had, dude, like, cousins lined up, like, nah, we're going to make you tough. You, you fighting Curtis today. Rico, you fighting Chance today. Like, like that, that, was, that, was, that was our upbringing. And it was like, nah, you, what you get, you deserve. Mm -hmm. you, you eat what you kill. And Chance made that shit known early. And I had to get it. Like I, tough conversation, though. It wasn't, though. No, like, it, was, like, like, it was tough for me to receive. Exactly. That's what it I It was mean. tough for me to receive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, no. Nah, like, you can't have that conversation. Like, what do we got? Though? Yeah, exactly. 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 So it was, it was it, I, I had to grind. I had to yeah. grind. And I was never the best player. I was never the smartest kid. I had to, I had to work. It took work. Hey, you remind me of me. Like, um, I wasn't the best. I had to work hard. I had to grind. I had to work out. Like, I had to go to school every day. And there's only a couple people that believe in you. And I've said this countless times on the podcast, is this dude right here, Big Herm, was one of the few people that I can count on my hands that believed in me as being, um, like, an athlete. Because we grew up around the Courtney's, the Darcy's, the Romans, the this, the that, like all these people who were superior athletes, and we had to work hard just to even come close. We would never be equal to them, but even come close to like being for sure. But Damon, what did that look like? How did he? What did Uncle Herman do though? Um, I think it's what he talked about, right? Do as I say, and that changed over time. Um, 
And there's no, I don't think there's any like umbrella answer of like what that looks like, but we had to find our way that worked out for us. Mine was, um, I didn't have a, 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 a dual pam, a, a two parent home. home, excuse me, two parent home. I didn't have that. Yeah. So I had to lean on somebody who would bring me in um, to say, you can do this. Granted, my family did that, but like having a male do that, an alpha male do that is big. And that's why I'm forever in debt to this dude right here. That's missing. Yeah, and I, I received it. In your, sh in your talk earlier, you talked about some dudes that didn't receive it. I received it. Yeah. This isn't about me, it, like, but yeah. like, I get it. Yeah, so, so Rodney, at 14, like, like, yo, like, you had to have some pretty, <clears throat> a pretty wide range, like, you, you, but your insight had to be at a certain level at 14 Absolutely. to really hear your brother tell you, like, yo, this is my bread, this ain't your bread. Now, most 14, like, my 14-year-old self, yeah, we that would have went in this year and out the other. No, my brother is paid. <laughs> so, yeah, your money is my money. You really going to let me struggle? <laughs> so, so, but to... Courtney, it was so crazy. Like, my brother, when Chauncey made it, my brother quit his job. <laughs> he quit. So I come home and I said, hey, you got to go to work? He was like, nah, I quit. So you quit. You didn't hear? Chauncey's a millionaire. Yeah, yeah. I said, bro, like, right. that's his money. We, we literally got into a fist fight because I couldn't believe he quit. Luckily, Lusky didn't file his paperwork because he didn't. But that was the mentality. Like, yeah, yeah. he made it. We yeah. all made it. But, as a four, but, but Ronnie, but as a 14-year-old boy, to hear your brother say, like, yo, this is my bread, not yours. If you to say, okay. Let me take myself out of fantasy world, right? Right. And let me bring but, myself into my world. Yeah. And then start to chart my own path at 14 is pretty, it's pretty huge. But that didn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. Like, if you, know, if, if you know my dad, my dad's a car guy, right? So I got every hand-me-down car. Like, unfortunate people, like, we hand-me-downs from cousins to all the way down to the little fellas. Grand, the blue grand. So I got that too, but it went, <laughs> it went from like, you know, yeah. Chauncey having a Cherokee to, Chauncey, grand having, grand first, though, to right? Chauncey having a range to Chauncey having a navigator. To, yeah. So all these cars got shifted down through me and like, yeah, they were used that when I got them, but I'm still in high school driving Range Rovers. Yeah. So I was, my, my vision was blurry at times mm. got it. because of that. Right. You know? bring yourself back but in. recruiting. Like thinking I was much better than what I was. Um, during the year, coaches calling, coaches calling. And I, I had a really, I can't say really good. I had, I was, I was fortunate to play with good players that made me look good. Nice. Junior, see, uh, uh, summer going into from junior to senior year, I probably had, I don't know, 12, 12 options. I'm thinking I'm better than what I am. Now I'm not signing in the uh, fall, I'm gonna wait till springtime, like the big, like the big dogs do. Man, all them offers got dried up so quick, and I didn't like the options that I had in the spring, so I had to go to junior college. So now this kid who is student body president at George, who's this scholar athlete, who right. like the neighborhood is watching, like has to go to junior college. Mm -hmm. And at the time, junior college is for like second chance kids. Kids yeah. didn't pass the test, kids that just needed a second opportunity. Yeah. I'm the one that has to go there. So that was like humbling in itself. Like that brought me all the way down. And from there, I just what had the you? same LA Valley, LA Valley College. I had that same like, let's go get it attitude since then. And you know what? Like I, I can relate because I wasn't as near as good as you were. And I went to junior college also, cause it was, to be honest, like I think your brother fucked it up for a lot of he us. Did. Cause we thought he we did. could be that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Like he came I'm through and he was like, oh, yeah. I can yeah. do that. Yeah. You know, and yeah. the work he put in and you put in a lot of work too, man. So I'm not gonna let you sell yourself short, but it was that of like, 
<laughs> yo, I got to go to D1 yep. and I'm going to be that thing because it's possible, which is dope, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not knocking that. You should definitely do that. But your brothers was doing a lot of things behind the scenes that people didn't know as far Absolutely. as putting in that work. Absolutely. And I'll tell this story real quick because you was out there and he had us do a drill at the old Skyland. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's called, but you remember you run to the sideline, come back. It was like a seven drill. Yeah. Yep. Run to the sideline, come back to the elbow, shoot. If you make it, one bucket down. So you six, right? I make yep. it six, you go all the way to zero. But if you miss, it's two up. Mm -hmm. So if I would have missed that, it's nine. Ooh. And you had to complete that drill. Chance had us do that drill. And I wasn't the best shooter. And he was on the front out. Fam. <laughs> and he would not let me quit. Like, I was about to walk out the gym, and he was like, nah, man, get your ass back out here. You know what I mean? But anyway, but I had to share that. Yeah. For you, it's dope that you shared that because you learned, not that you, you learned, like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go this different route. And then you flipped it quickly mm -hmm. and was like, all right, I'm going to DU. Great opportunity. You do your thing, and the next thing you know, you're going into coaching, mm -hmm. right? Because you've always had a great basketball mind. Tell us, was it, it was a DU first, or did you go to CU? Went to CU first. You went to CU. Went Tell to CU us a little first. bit about that experience of being up in CU and mm -hmm. getting so, your journey. From playing, I played in Europe for two years. Uh, got shorted because what I thought was right, uh, I stopped playing. My mom got sick. I stopped playing, and I wanted to be here. Like I, I told myself, if my mom and dad couldn't come see me play, I'm, I'm, what am I playing for? Absolutely. So I took that to be here. Chauncey and I started a couple businesses. For two years, I was trying to figure life out. Um, and like, yeah, there were some missteps in there uh, where I had, you know, I had to learn. Look, I lost some money, and I just had to figure life out. So I'm at Skyland waiting for a pro-am game, um, and uh, the lady survivors are, are, are practicing. And <coughs> kudos to Uncle Herman. Uncle Herman, really, he, he really doesn't know that he started my, coach, my coaching career, but the lady survivors are, are practicing. And the coach is just yelling at him, yelling at him. Like, to not teaching, but just yelling. So I'm like, you know what, Uncle Herman, let me, let me, let me, let me help. Let me volunteer. So, so Auntie Kim. So that is but, <laughs> Hey, Coach Herman coach every day. Yeah. No, no, Coach Herman wasn't the coach. No. He wasn't the well, coach. He was the yellow. He was yellow. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Co coach Herman. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I'm about to say Coach Herman was more yelling. Uncle, uh, Uncle Herman. So the coach who was coaching was yelling. He was yelling. Oh, yeah. 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 No. No. Why do we always no. equate Coach Herman to no. yelling? No. Tra trauma. But, trauma. But, <laughs> trauma. But, but, here's what, but, but here's the difference. He was teaching through yelling. Yeah. This yeah. teacher wasn't, t she, this coach wasn't teaching. Yep. Right? Dope. Dope. So, Absolutely. So I'm like, Auntie Kim, Uncle Herman, like, let me, can I help? And right there was like where I started my career. Mm -hmm. I, Got it. I, the, I don't know if it was the next day or a few days later, I started helping. And the love that I got from the girls, it was like eighth grade, maybe ninth grade. The love that I got and the, the, the support that I got mm -hmm. and the feeling that I got from coaching and then them putting it together and then it being successful, I fell in love with coaching. So that happened way before CU. Mm. Got it. So fast forward maybe two summers, uh, that's when I got the director of basketball operations job at CU. So I was in... I was in ops for two years, coaching for four, and then I was uh, head coach for five years. But my experience in Boulder, it was different. Um, like, I, I always enjoy learning. And to our conversation earlier about this Portland opportunity, it's like if I'm ever in an environment where I can learn and bring, that, bring it back to the people that are watching, like, I'm in heaven. Like, Absolutely. Sean and I have conversations, Sean White and I have conversations about what I learned, what he learned what I'm reading, like we, if I'm ever in a position where I can learn, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Right. Um, but the Boulder opportunity was, it was fun. We did a lot of winning up there. Um, I learned from Coach Boyle every single day about just how to run a team, how to run a business, like how to 
functioning in a room full of white players versus the homies with the black. You know what I mean? Like, I nah, just, absolutely. I, I, I was able to, to navigate a lot of different situations up there. Um, and I, I, I'm, ever, I'm always going to be in debt to that for that opportunity. For sure. This guy's good. This this guy right here is good. Yeah, I'm, you you know, know, just being learning, honest. So I ask you this. For steepest learning curve, because you play both. Mm -hmm. Quarterback, point guard. Mm -hmm. From from mm, That's a great question. I, it's hard because I was in eighth grade the last football was, through. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Was. They say I was good. I you know, I don't I don't know how good I was, but they said I was good. Man, that that boy was throwing footballs in the dirt, man. Nah, <laughs> man, nah, man. We used to look down on him like, oh man, they, look at look at Rodney playing Had a nice me. little spiral. Yeah. yeah. I was throwing that joint no look. Yeah. Before Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes. But like Yeah. Yeah. But but the biggest learning curve that I had was like going from player to coach mm. like you know I, I felt like i quit early and i felt like i can play with the guys like these guys that we were recruiting they would come on a visit and i say all right you beat me you get a scholarship like this is how i felt in yeah. that moment but my conversation had to change for them to start taking me serious yeah. and it, it took some time for that but like my role on the staff when I first got there was had the post of the locker room. So I was able to, to be successful in that role, but also be patient. My, my boss was patient with me to be able to, to learn my voice and to grow my voice on the court. But I mean, it was, it, it was hard though. It was How hard. did you balance your age, like with your youth as a coach and coaching pretty much young men? Well, I had to stop using the N word a lot. Mm. Um, and, and I had to, I had to teach them through my experiences, because what they were going through, I had just went through. Yep. Um, but it was hard because the same music they listened to, I listened to, the same type of people that they interact with, same, same here. Was that a bridge, um, dude? That, it, that it, uh, look, I'm sorry, that throws me back, yeah. like to stop, like because that's a cultural thing that mm -hmm. we just do. Mm -hmm to use, like, in your words, the N-word. Mm -hmm. That's, like, how you connect. Yeah. Like, so no, I'm I not saying I, everybody. I disagree, but. No, I'm not saying not everybody. Yeah. But that's that that's a part of the culture. But let, let's talk about why you stopped using yeah. it. That, thank now, you. I'm not a saint. I still use it through conversation, right? Okay. Like, but you got to know your audience. And, you know, when I'm around older people, like elders, no, I try, I try hard That's not dope, to man. use it. When yeah. I'm around kids and I hear kids in the locker room using it, I try to stop them right in their tracks, um, because it just it it devalues who we are, in my opinion. Mm. When when you know it's it's loud, like it's it's it's, it's nasty. A loud word. Yeah, it's loud. But like I said, I'm not a saint. If I'm having a good time with with Corey, who we talked about in the barbershop in the last segment. Yeah. It might be some might slip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so does that really mean it develop? Because I feel like it's a passion word. Like sometimes it, it is. all of, it, it, you it, know is. it is. But yeah. But if like if, if I I'm, want you to really feel what I'm saying, I say that, and it, I'm not proud about it. But again, I'm not gonna. I, I say it in the it's setting. It's a term of endearment. It, it's a setting that has to be there. Yeah. yeah. The setting. The setting Seven. has to be right. But if we're in the locker room and there's white players and there's oh, no, white no, coaches no, no, no. and there's no. there's general managers now, no. like, no, nah, we, we got to clean this up. What's crazy, if I hear it, then I look down on, like, I got yeah. the nerve to look down on somebody that's saying it in that space. Yeah. Yeah. What's crazy about it, and, and, <laughs> and I say this jokingly, right, I feel the same way about a do-rag, oh. right? Listen to me. I wear a do-rag every single day. Man, every bro, single day. Is a do -rag. Hey, do -rag, every single bro. day. Hey, he got no every single day. Every single day. But to the people that don't wear a do rag, that's looking, yeah. they judging. Mm. They, I they judging. So I don't wear it in public. If I got on in public, you gotta. Ha I got a hat over it. Yeah. I got you. It's the same thing for me with the N word. Like yeah, it's cool when people that are around that use it. But now, like, if Josh and and Billy over here. They, they hear it, it's different, it's different. So I try not to use it. Hey, you know what's crazy, man, is uh, b back in my early corporate days, um, I walked in the building 
and I had a do rag or I had a yeah do rag on you know the one the nylon ones no not the stocking cap but the nylon ones that like you let the back hang you let the back hang down yeah, your, yeah, down yeah, your yeah. yeah okay hey you know what's crazy I walked in the building and I was going in the elevator and I was gonna take it off as soon as I got out the elevator and I was in um the elevator in in, in the the VP for the company he was from Park Hill and he was like. Take your do rag off. He snapped at you. No, he just said take your do rag. No, I thought he snapped at you and told you to take it off. He just said take your do rag. I was okay. like, I'm gonna take it off when we get like <clears throat> on the floor. And he's like, Look, you, you need to take it off in your car. Yeah. And I was like, damn. Since that day, never want to do rag. It's That's like it's just an interesting dynamic, man. It's a cultural thing. It is. It is. And then with that, um, just to switch gears a little bit. I want to go back to your aspect of working, right? Because, of course, we talked about, you know, Big Bro, what he's done, you know, just throughout basketball and his accomplishments, you know, the fantasy life, right? And you thinking, you taking a different route. Like, I think you sell yourself short because the place that you're at right now, like, you work to get there. Right. For some people, they, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Chauncey could have easily be like, yo, yes, you can be on the staff and I got a spot for you, bro. But the way you've positioned yourself throughout your career, like that shit was earned. Yeah, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you're like a real resume. Absolutely. Like, so. <laughs> like a real resume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I'm giving you your flowers, man. He has <laughs> bullet points on his resume. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. He got that real resume. Yeah. No, nah, absolutely. It, but it, it, has, it has been work. Like, it has. I've really. had to overcome, as, not just as an athlete, but as a person, that stigma of Chance is a fucking rock star, bro. Like, yeah. Chance can go anywhere in the world. He's a household name anywhere in the world. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, like, being in, in, in this same genre, it's like, oh, Chance gave you that. Chance. But they don't know. They don't know no, the story. No, absolutely. Yeah. And I don't need them to know the story. Like, I, my, my work is for me. Mm, like, I don't, tough, I, like, and, and I, I put this, I, I put this, you know, bringing it back full circle on Park Hill because when I was an athlete playing pro, I called back to see what was going on in Park Hill. When I was coaching in Boulder, I wanted to be in Park I come to Park Hill every week to get my hair cut. When I'm the head coach at university, like, Park Hill has always been the reason and the people that's in it. And my parents still live in the same house, so it's like, this yeah, is absolutely. it's it's all full circle for me. Like I do it for my neighborhood, I do it for my family. So they're proud. The people that talk about all this nonsense about what Chance could have did or should have did, or or even that what he's done, it don't matter to me. Like that's not my that's not my motivation. Man, how has that. your how has your work ethic and shit with your resume? You know what I mean brought you and your brother closer in terms of like yo like That's a great question. He, really great he didn't question. just hire you nah, you know what nah. i mean like again so when i say resume i say that like yes it's it's, it's, it's funny yeah. but at the end of the day it's real like yo i cut my teeth in the overseas i pay my dues in operations at cu i, I assistant coached at cu had coaching experience. Then I came over to the league. If if Jeff Van Gundy was coaching the team and he saw your resume, it wasn't like he could just look at your resume and just throw it to the side. Like like you have credentials. You know what I mean? So how has that brought you guys closer? It's because you, because it is that seven year gap in terms of saying like, yo, man, I trust your decision making enough to bring you on my staff as a, a my professional staff? That's kind of a hard question to answer because I am still a little brother. Like, I, like he, he's been, you know, and, and kudos to my parents. I got unbelievable parents. But Chance, when he went to the league, like, he became head of our, of our house. He became, you know, the decision makers because he was affording us opportunities, right? So I am still a little brother. But here's the play. He, he started coming to my practices and started coming around and, and started asking questions about the game and learning from me. He was doing commentating uh, with, the, with, the, with ESPN. 
and he became comfortable with, with my philosophies and my ideologies of, of the game. And he's like, all right, well, if I'm ever a head coach, I'm going to hire you first. Like, I was going to be his first hire. And it just came, it just came to fruition. Like, it, that, was, that was the play the whole time. Now, How there were some hurdles. Feel, great, but, you, but, great but I was you ready. You weren't the first hire. You were, like, yeah. second or third. Well, <laughs> there was hurdles because <laughs> nepotism, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, like, the and universe optics. worked, right? The, the universe worked. Like, I wasn't very successful as a head coach at, at Denver at wins and losses, but I graduated every kid that, that came through there and exhausted their eligibility. Like, I had great success with teaching life. Mm -hmm. We get let go in March. Chance gets the job in, in like, June. And Chance goes to the GM. My first hire is my brother. The GM at the time was like, no, nah, the optics of it, you being a first-time head coach, we can't hire you because of what it looks like. Right. The universe works, man. Like, it, they fired his ass in December. The very next day, Chance called, like, get your, pack your shit, let's go. Mm. Like, it, it just, is, like, yeah. it was that unbelievable. Was that like that stamp? Was that like that stamp, like, damn, man, like, that's what I was gonna ask. Like Scott. all them, going. like all them times, my brother would possibly, possibly kind of push me to the side because I'm little brother. And them fuckers just leave me because I'm little brother. And mama asks, hey, go pick Rodney up. Fuck that. I'm trying to pick Rodney up for. And then now, and then now, and then now, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then now, and then now, like damn. <laughs> My brother trusted me enough to bring me on his staff. Yeah. Not but only it, but, that, but, but he's picking your brain yeah. on philosophy. Exactly. Like, that's so a win. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And like, not to say, because it's always what Courtney said is little bro. But now, big bro is coming to little yeah, bro. I got more like, experience. Hey, yeah. I got, like, I, I called five years of timeouts before he called one. Mm. So, it was, like, there was a, there was a respect there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, 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 it's like, so, it's like now, so it's almost like now, but you guys are, are, are looking eye to eye as men and as as colleagues. And granted, you guys are brothers, and granted he's the head coach, but he has to literally respect your knowledge in the game of basketball. Mm -hmm. And that's that equalizer to say, like, yo, like we're boy, we're from boys to men now. It's business. Yeah, it's yeah. It, and it's business. Yeah, and it's it really business. is. It is. It really is business because it's wins and losses. And then um, to push it forward, Rodney. Um, from a leadership perspective, t t tell us like what some of your greatest like leadership moments were um, being in operations, learning the business of head coaching, like the spectrum mm -hmm. of being a coach. Well, everything as a head coach, everything stops at your desk. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, in college, it, the, the biggest difference between college and, and NBA or professional ranks is like if a kid gets in trouble, it's your fault as a coach in college. Kid getting in trouble is his fault in the pros. So the biggest thing mm -hmm. that I felt was important as a head coach at Denver is making sure that I teach life, right? And I alluded to it a little bit ago, but like when a kid messes up at two in the morning having a dispute with a woman, like we got to address that. Like mm -hmm. that that's not a, 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 a police issue. That's not, that's a that's an internal issue. That's a... I, I need to do my, that's my job, mm -hmm. right? My job ain't to walk you to class. My job ain't to make sure that you on time to fucking, to, to your tutor. My job is to teach you life and, and, and hold you accountable for that. Absolutely. And I learned that from Sean. Sean held, held, held all, she held the neighborhood accountable. Mm -hmm. um, but like my, my leadership style was, right, I'm gonna give you an example of what I was in college. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna soften you up, but I'm gonna fucking tighten you up as soon as you you get comfortable, mm -hmm. and it worked. Like that's my that's who I am. So like I'm holding you accountable. Don't know what that means, like, just be crystal clear on what that means. I'm gonna soften you up, but I'm gonna tighten you up. Yeah, like I'm gonna love on you hard. Mm -hmm. Like I'm I'm gonna love on you hard, but I'm gonna hold you accountable. There I'm you a, go. I, I'm gonna I'm give you everything I got. I'm gonna pour into you, mm -hmm. but when you mess up, I'm also. I'm gonna hold you accountable to it. Yeah. We're gonna talk about it. Here we go. Man, but those, but those, um, so those approaches that you took in uh, college, how does that translate to the NBA? Nah, it doesn't. I'm learning how to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, because that's growing up in, right? And that's, yeah, yeah, nah, it doesn't. <laughs> tighten up, nah, tighten up. Nah. Tighten up this 60 million so, I got in the bank. <laughs> so what I'm, I'm learning is, is the sweat equity piece, right? Like, I'm in the gym, and I learned this from Chance. Like, I, 
I attribute Chauncey's success in the NBA and his ability to shoot the ball as one of the best shooters there ever was is because I was rebounding, mm -hmm. right? Like that's what equity piece of just being there and talking and sweating and going through all the times, good, bad, or indifferent. Like that's what they, that's what they respond to. And I'm, like I'm learning that all over again. Like I had to really humble myself from going head coach to now like this guy in the NBA who doesn't have any experience. So I'm, I'm learning again, which is, which is fantastic. I function well in the, in, the, in the dirt, but it's like the sweat equity. Like we in this shit Done. together. Like we, we gonna fight, we gonna claw, we gonna win, and we gonna, we gonna fucking spill champagne at the yeah. end. Did you so, have something? Because I, I, I have a follow up. Nah, well, I was gonna ask, <laughs> like I was just no, no. entranced because like what's dope about that is I'm imagining like the brotherhood that you're talking about. So it's just like everybody's on the same team, right? Mm -hmm. We all like, we got our roles, like for Chance and the coaching staff, like we manage like the game plan and things like that. And for the players, it's like, yeah, we're gonna make sure we do what we need to do to make the best possible uh, possibility for the team to win. So for you to say you were out there creating the trust with those players because they got egos you know? oh yeah you know what for i mean sure. so for you're sure. out there throwing sure. the ball back or whatever they are working on you're kind of leaning into that and helping so that they you can build that trust so when it comes game time you're exactly. leaning in on the in the ear like hey let's try this or let's do this or you're you know you're slacking blah mm -hmm. blah blah they're like they'll listen to you so i i, I like the tactic man and that's dope i learned that though i learned that as a student athlete like you talked about my my uh, degree in business business management. Like I learned how to how to do that there. Got and it. Like he, you know you he, make people feel comfortable. He learned how to deflect too. You see it? Yeah. You yeah, see you it? Learn, I told you this guy it. is good. Man. You learn He's how to, good. You, you learn personalities yeah. and you learn how to how to support. Deflect. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> Charismatic. I'm just saying like you never give yourself enough credit. Bro, like you never like you play yourself down like in in this I I see what very you humble, do very humble like how 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 we never talk about how great of a player you were like you you are you know what I'm saying like yeah. we we talking about Chauncey being able to shoot it but you know the deal <laughs> for sure to handle the rock you know the deal. Thank you know what you, I mean? Sean. Yes. But it's cool. Like, it's, yes. he's, he's Thank good. You. Thank you, He went Sean. to business Absolutely. school. He did. Like, yeah. He knows how to deflect. Because yeah. I had that in my notes. There. Like, I was like, yo, one of the best ball handlers Man. to come through Denver, like Colorado. You know what I mean? Like, Denver. ridiculous sick. Oh, yeah. Like, ridiculous. Absolutely. Like, like I, I've never seen a person have the ball and be able to make, like, quick. Now, I'm not talking about fast. I'm talking about A to B. A to B, like that's absolutely I incredible. Yeah, you know as far I mean? as like a point guard, because in my mind growing up, uh, for you, the elephant in the room was just size. size. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think everybody for has sure. always said Chance is the better player overall as a guard. But you have always been the better point guard. Hey, Jay, let's talk about this. So talk it's like, you know, we let's know Chance, you know, like Chance is a, he was a tweener, like coming up. Like he, mm -hmm. and I don't want to sound like that's, you know, uh, bad, mm -hmm. but he was like, he definitely was a point, but he could score that thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas you were more about getting, that's why you're a natural. Coach, a decision like, maker, yeah, and decision that's why maker. I asked the question. Yeah, point guard or quarterback. I, Sauce, thank you for bringing it home. Yeah, like, you know, no, no, he, he did. He, he said it early, um, but that's what the question was. What do you think? Well, well, well. You know, because they're they're very they're parallel positions. It's it's, it's about making sure everybody's in the right position. It's about uh, being cerebral. It's about it's about making good decisions. Definitely. And, and a lot of a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of point guards translate into head coaches. You know what I mean? That like like in the great teachers. And that's kind of the lane that you kind of that you're kinda of in. You know what I mean? You was a point guard. You was, you was a quarterback. 
Hey, I'm gonna play tell guard you. out the, all the way through high school, all the way down hey, to coach. Sauce be on that bullshit sometimes. <laughs> that was not bullshit. Like, <laughs> for real. No, no, for real. Spot on. Like, no. Sauce is spot on. No, absolutely. It's like, if you, like, as a point guard, you know what's going on with every single person on the court. How many times do you have to call a person a motherfucker? A lot. There you go. <laughs> because, because they weren't doing what they were supposed to do. For sure. You know why? Because you knew it. For sure. You For knew sure. what they were supposed to do. And they didn't know what they were supposed to do. Sure. You see what I'm saying? I definitely know what yeah. you're saying. And, yeah. And, and that's what, like, a coach, going back to what we talked about with Coach Herman, yelling, he knew what... He knew what the 11 players, yeah, he knew but what actually it looked he knew like. what 22 players <laughs> yeah. were supposed to do, offense yeah. and defense. Yeah. And then, but like a real coach knows the landscape of offense and defense. For sure. Yeah. And that's, that, that's why you are where you are and, now. And how, to push, and how to push your teammates' buttons. And that's what I'm saying. Like your whole, your whole trajectory has, has, has prepared you to learn how to push the right buttons. You know, quarterback, you gotta know how to push the right buttons. Point guard, you gotta be able to push the right buttons. Head coach, you gotta be able to push the right buttons to motivate these young men to um, get to where they ultimately need to be. And one thing about Rodney, in terms of being a task master, I remember <laughs> Rodney had uh, came on uh, one of our social emotional learning sessions over at the Pirates. Yeah, talk about it. And Rodney was like, <laughs> I don't know what we were talking about, but we got to maybe like his coaching style. I mean, his coaching style. And I want to say, if I remember correctly, Rodney said, hey, I'm going to tell, I'm going to, no, how Rodney dealt with coaches, how Rodney coached the coaches, right? It wasn't yeah. the players. It was how he coached the coaches. So, so you saying that, hey, I, I'm going to love up my players, but then I'm going to hold them accountable when I need to. What I heard from you on the other social emotional low, social, social emotional learning sessions, I'm holding my coaches account accountable. One hundred percent. So Rodney said, "I'm gonna tell you one time. <laughs> I might tell you twice, <laughs> but the third time, but that third, third time, time I'm doing myself and you out of here." <laughs> 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 I was like, damn, dog. And it was it like, like it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't no wavering about it. That was like, that's my process. I'm gonna tell you one time. I'm, I maybe tell you the second time. Like we grew up like time. that. You're fired, and then I'm gonna go do it myself, and I'm gonna get somebody else. We grew up no. like that. We that's we grew up like that. Like our grandmothers are all sisters, you know, and they held you accountable. And and it, it was like I'm not finna waste my time. Like you said, I'm gonna tell you one time, maybe twice. That third time, you out. Damn, I got to rethink my parenting style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Because no. I got a six-year-old that's unruly as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't repeat yeah. myself all the time, fam. Like, God damn it, get out of But getting back to you, as far as, since we're on the topic of coaching, like, for you, who are those coaches that you look at and that you kind of... Love that. ...pattern or want mm -hmm. to be in the future? I take from a little bit of everybody. There you go. Um, there, there's not one perfect coach because the but there's three that you pull from oh easy easy probably four or five to okay. be honest um obviously tad and boulder i thought tad his his sideline was really good like he he really knows knows how to vo motivate those guys um, but his day-to-day -day wasn't great larry brown who i was fortunate to learn from just in passing like we we would have coaching clinics at SMU when he was in, uh, back at SMU. SMU. Right. Unbelievable teacher. Mm. Unbelievable teacher. To the where, like, he see things, you know, at the 12-minute mark that he don't address to the second half. Like, and his mind was like, I knew every possession. And he was able to teach Damn. that. Wow. Yeah, he was, he was phenomenal. That's like chess, like a He's motherfucker right there. Um, the easy ones are, are Chauncey and Ty. Like, Chauncey's rapport with the guys and, and, and how he talks to them and how he teaches them, like I didn't have that in my, in my game. So I'm learning that. And, and Ty's ability on the board and the timeout, his ability to just like construct an offense again and, and break a defense down, unbelievable. Uh, hey man, so. can, can, can we go there? Um, the ability to talk to your players. What does that mean in the locker room? 
I said, everything. Yeah. Because there, there's, there's usually a space early on in a relationship where NBA players, even the better college players, can sniff out the bullshit. Like, they know if you're good or bad. Mm -hmm. They know what your, what your motives are. Because mm -hmm. the, the, the coaches usually just kind of linger around the best players. Mm. Like, oh, wow. it, it, yeah, they gravitate to the best players. But the best players usually gravitate to the best coaches. So there's a shift, right? Like, when I got to Portland, like, and I was able, I got there in December, so I was able to just sit back and learn and watch and give my opinion here, tell Chauncey he's doing this wrong or doing that right. So I was able to, to just kind of ease my way in. But in doing so, like, guys just start gravitating to my, my energy. Mm -hmm. I don't want nothing from you. I don't want nothing from, but to teach and learn and help us win. Yep. My motive is the head coach now. Like, after going through being a, a, a head coach, I know exactly what a good assistant coach looks like. So that's so, important. So man. I'm able to now, like, I'm talking to these dudes every day. I'm sharing my story. I'm sharing Chauncey's story. Oh. I'm putting Chauncey in this fucking pedestal that cannot be touched or broken. And his word is the gospel in the locker room. Like, that's where the shit is done, like in the locker room. Right. Because yes. now when I walk out of the door, they echo on that shit. Yes. Yes. And they right. believe yes. in it. Yes. Yes. And now Chauncey can say he could do no wrong. He can call him the N-word if he want. Like, that, like, you know what I mean? Like, he can do yeah, no wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, I don't learn that if I don't go through my own, my man, own stuff. And that's, and, that's, and, that's a, and that's a mouthful, what you said, man, because I saw an interview with Yo Gotti, and he was talking about how great leaders know how to play more than just one role. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, yo, I like, with that. if I'm a great leader, like, like, even though I'm the CEO of this record company, right, some days, some some days, I gotta know how to be. You gotta be the soldier. security, yep. right? I gotta know how to be administrative. You know what I mean? But you don't know it unless you've done it. Unless, unless you've and done that's, it. And, 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 and I've and done it. Thank you, Damien. Unless you've done it, and you've done it, you're like, you know what? I've been a head coach. I know what that seat look, what that seat looks like. Not in the NBA, but I've been in that seat before. Mm -hmm. And then now I know what I wanted from my assistants. So then now that I'm an assistant, I'm going to be what I wanted as a head coach mm -hmm. to my brother. Yep. That's you, dope, man. You know who echo the same sentiments, man? I'm sorry, Sean. Just real quick. Um, in terms of, let's call it a player's coach. That's what it is, right? Yeah. Jamal said the same thing. Yeah, community. absolutely. Jamal said, Jamal the, Mosley. Mosley, okay. the players gravitate to me because they know that I've done the work. Yep. They know that I'm not asking them to do anything that I haven't done. Yep. Or will not do. For sure. And they, they latch on to it and they love that dude. Yep. There you go, Sean. Oh, no. I was just agreeing with what you were saying before. Yeah. Man, so, man craziest road story, man. I don't have no The craziest what? Road story. I can't. That's the road story. That's probably. God damn, that was a shift. You're going to give up the T? You know what I'm saying? That's probably. That's probably. Give you a T? Okay, okay. No T. I thought you were going to be like Michael Jordan up here. Hey, I can't get somebody rude. No, no, no. You already know. I said, hey, this is too much for me. I'll share this. I'll share this. Hey, hold on. Here we go. I'll share this. And I'll leave names out. But. We lose a game. This is I'm at Denver. Uh, we lose a, our first conference game at Omaha. Um, and Omaha. At a, uh, yeah, University of Nebraska at oh, Omaha. Oh, okay. Oh, God, God. Um, so we get back to the hotel. We stay in the night because we we fly to, to uh, Fort Wayne the next day. And you know, in, in the college game, everybody has like different scouting reports that they have to present to the team. You present to the staff, then you present to the team, and you know, we play or coach accordingly. So this particular coach, it was his scout. We lose the game. He's hot. He's hot, bro. Hot. So we meeting as a staff in the, in the, uh, in my hotel room, the TV is on and we talking about the game. And he said, coach, like with all due respect, like if we not going, if we just going to watch TV, we not going to talk about the game. I'm, I'm going to excuse myself. <laughs> so I'm like, nah, let's talk. Yeah, like <laughs> it was just the highlights of sports center. But the other guys, it was just me and him talking. The other guys were watching the TV. So I'm like, nah, we talking, coach. Come on, we talking. Right. And the TV stays on. So two, three minutes later, 
uh, he says, Coach, I got to go because I'm getting pissed off. The other coach, other assistant on my right, now we sitting on like, it's two chairs and it's a long couch and it's two chairs on that side. Yeah. So we sitting like around the U-shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the coach in the far chair is like, we are listening, we are talking. And he, he says to him, he says, well, say something, motherfucker, <laughs> right? So he, the, the coach that, that chirped, he's like, it was your scout, I didn't have to say nothing. When he said that, he erupted. And he got up and he, he had a wine glass in his hand. He threw this wine glass at the wall, pow, shattered everywhere. Stood above, dude. He took his glass, he had like whiskey or something, threw that thing against the wall, pow, that erupted. He said, if you say one more thing, motherfucker, I'm going to kill you. Damn. <laughs> you the head coach. You're I'm the, the head coach. Bro. I'm the youngest dude in there. I'm the youngest dude in there. So I don't know what to say. Star, Cause, star, cause, cause, star human resources. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Yes. Human resources help me. Yeah. Yeah. So, so these are the two oldest guys on my staff. <clears throat> the two oldest. I said, hey, man, this shit's over, man. Y'all got to get the fuck out of my room. So now I'm acting like I'm mad. I'm surprised. I don't know what the hell is going on. So they leave. But I say that to say, like, the players are competitive, but the coaches are even more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. The, the more that we can teach this competitive nature, the better our kids going to be. The better our kids going to be. Because we live in it and growing in this community of, like, the parents are fighting the battles for the kids. Yeah. We got to teach our kids to fight the battles. Like we got to, we got to reverse this, this, this culture. Yeah. Because so, if, if, if a 60 and 65 year old man about to fight over a game that they had nothing to do with. And over some like, Trader Joe's whiskey. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Over him watching the TV. Yeah. Like our kids got to get that fire back. Man, what's the best advice that you can give a parent, man, who has a four-year-old? A four-year-old. They're trying. Who they just know is going to be in the fucking professional, a professional yeah. athlete, and that's how they conduct themselves. That's tough, nah, shit, I don't know. That's tough. That's above my pay grade. <laughs> tell, tell that parent to go get therapy. <laughs> man, <laughs> man <laughs> seriously, bro. Like it's hard. Like. And I, I used to say this all the time because I used to train kids too. It's like, like don't take the fun out of it for the yeah. kid. Like, I think that's that's great advice right there. Don't take the fun out of it. Don't take the fun. It's not serious, man. Like you, you, you might think this is competitive basketball at four years old, at 14 years old, but it ain't that competitive, bro. Yeah. Like so don't take the fun out of it. We, we've asked you questions that are important to us. What's something that you would want others to know about you? I'm a worker. That's it. Like I ain't. Um, you ain't no worker. I'm not. Stop, I'm like. Man. No. I'm not a self promoter, right? Like this is very uncomfortable for me. Anyway, like I'm not. For man, you're killing it. No, nah, but I'm just talking. We just you're talking because we're family. Yeah. yeah. But like I'm not. I'm not a self promoter, and I think my 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 career would have gone differently, probably faster. If you were self. If I was a self promoter. But I'm not. I just like to work, man. I just like to be in the mud and, and try to win. Win every day. Got it. Um, I got to ask you a question because you are at the elite level now. Like, when you see those guys that are out there, like the KDs, the uh, LeBrons, you know, any superstar out there, like, what, what is that feeling to be getting the coach out of it, just getting all mm -hmm. that out of it and just being there coaching these type of players and mm -hmm. sitting in that atmosphere. What does that have to feel like? Practice is the same, like honestly, because those dudes at that level, they still, they're human. They still want to be good. My first game on the sideline uh, was against the Lakers in LA. Damn. Yeah, like <laughs> we had three coaches out with COVID, so I got to sit on the front of the bench. And LeBron, when I tell you, he's, a, he, he's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. He's, he had 42 that night, mm -hmm. and it looks so easy, bro. But those guys are so big, right? I'm 5'10", 180 pounds. Brian is like on a good night soaking yeah. wet with a hoodie on. <laughs> but, <laughs> but those dudes are so big, it's ridiculous. And it's almost like you're in awe. Yeah. But like you can, you can see like how the good ones became good, their work ethic, what they do to prepare, how they take care of their bodies. Like Giannis was like a, an unbelievable experience when they came to Portland. 
Got it. He's out there first warming up. He's doing stretching. He's doing shooting, ball handling. He's doing, like, it's almost he didn't even have a game today. He's working so hard. And he put before the game. Bef- like an hour and a half before the game. He's the first one on the court. And he, everything you saw him do before the game, he put in the game. You know what's crazy? Um, I'll be the first one to tell you. I think basketball players are studio as fuck. Okay. <laughs> studio. Okay. Soft, kissing that. I was in college and I went and sat courtside on the game. Mm-hmm. And these dudes were banging. Mm-hmm. I was like, why are they playing football? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, these yeah, are, yeah, no, right. and to his yeah. point, like when you say like they like get after it and they're mm-hmm. big and they're strong and they're fast and you're 6'10 and you're athletic, mm-hmm. dude, basket mm-hmm. like I have a different appreciation for basketball. I for really sure. do. For sure. And you don't see it in like on TV, it, you don't see that. Nah. But when you're when you're at a game and you're close, you see it. Yeah. So it's speaking crazy. of that, like to your alma mater, that brings us to y'all star player. Dame Dash. Yeah. Yeah. Dame Lillard. Like yeah. talk a little bit about just he, Dame and the killer that he is. I think he's the best player that I've ever like been around for at length. Mm-hmm. Like he's an elite shot maker. He takes the game serious. Like he's he's our hardest worker. He's coming off injuries, so yeah, he is. He is. He's an NIGGA for sure. <laughs> just, just what with like, yeah, yeah. he don't take no shit from nobody. Yeah. Like from the GM to the janitor, he's the exact same, mm-hmm. and I respect that. Like I respect that because that's Park Hill. Like he's he's yeah. he's one of us. And he's open. He's one of us. Yeah, he's open. But he's mm-hmm. that, that that he he's global with with how he is. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's the all-time. I met him, I met him one though. time, man, um, when he got inducted to the Hall of Fame at Weber State. Uh, and him and Eddie Gill, I don't know if you yeah, remember Eddie Gill. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's like so bizarre. He hit me up the other, yesterday just saying, what's up, man? Um, like Weber State put out some boys. They man. did. Yeah, they, did. Yeah. they did. They did. Man, they shout out to Eddie too, man. For sure. How's yeah. he doing? Where's he at? Yeah. No, Eddie's in Indianapolis. He works for the Pacers. Yeah. Yeah. No, That's great. Eddie's so he's great, doing dude. great. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's great. great. No, no, no. But shout out to Eddie. Cause like remember we were <laughs> no, about no, to Eddie. see Damien. Oh yeah, basketball. Player. And Eddie yeah. and, yeah. and Eddie yeah. had nothing Absolutely. back then. Yeah. Nothing. Like like. I just remember, like he was, he Eddie was, was nice. He, but no, but he was a dude that got it out the mud. Like remember, like Eddie had nothing. Yeah, no, you're up. right. You absolutely like, right. like he grew up, he grew up here pretty rough. I mean, I, I'm a rough, but we met him, and it, it wasn't like he was like, you know, with the Jays and all this, all this nice stuff. But I didn't see that from him. No, is, is that cap? No, that no, cap? no, it's no cap. Everybody has their different experience. Eddie was a freaking baller. No, he's a baller. And, yeah, oh, and nobody gonna take it away, regardless of how he grew up. Because he came from Jersey, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I remember Absolutely. that. Was, was, so Eddie's in Indianapolis. He works for the Pacers. Do a um, Fam, you make it to the league, you're a baller. You're a baller. Like, yeah, Absolutely. Not, and he played in Europe there. for like 10 years. Nah, he played The yeah. old league. The old league. There's some guys that's in the league now. That, that shouldn't be there. That got nothing. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know. I yeah. hold you. Man, I go hold you. Yo, but so, but so Ronnie, man, but like I know you had those days where you're just tired and you just don't want to do it no more. Like like you just said, like, man, I just don't feel like, I just don't, don't feel like fucking going to work today. Like what gets you there? Like the locker room. I think the locker room itself, like the camaraderie of the locker room, um, like it. Now it's different because I'm a parent, right? And, yeah, and yeah. my family's here in Denver. I'm, I'm in Portland, um, and there's a FaceTime that happens at six in the morning, so it's easy now to motivate myself. Uh, but typically on those days of like we get into a town at two in the morning, we got we got rehab and, and stretching at nine, and we on the floor at at 10, 10 30. Like those days, those days get, get rough. But it's like I'm doing this not because of me, but for a bigger purpose. Like it ain't about me. Yep. And like I'm the guy that's like keeping people happy, keeping people light and having fun. And, and if I show up bad, it's, gonna, it's, it's not going to end well. So I'm conscious about that. Yep. Got it. I, well, I'm going to let Damon yeah. ask this question, but I'm going to put you on the hot seat. I've been There's, on this month. Yeah. So we always, you know, when we talk basketball, we always say the top five. 
You willing, to, you willing to give us your top five? It's subjective, right? It's my top five? It's, it's yours. Top five. It's yours. It's all right. yours. All right, so MJ one, uh, Kobe two, Bron three, uh, Chauncey four, um, and five is a wild card. I, I, center, center. A center, probably Kareem. Yeah. Hey, Jalen Rose, Kareem. he said Kareem, Kareem. too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, over, over Shaq. It was pretty yeah. interesting. Shaq me. was dominant, but yes. nobody could stop the, the jump hook. Hey, man, uh, respect. First and foremost. No, I appreciate it, bro. Absolute respect, man. Thank you for coming to uh, Hillside Barbers. The Hillside Barbers. Yes. Sean, thank no. you so much. I thank y'all for coming. Yeah, we've yeah. been here. We've yeah. been here 30 we, years. We have been. Forget the 22. 22, 22 years. years. We've been here. 22 years. We've been here. No, thanks and for um, if you recommended somebody to be on the show, who would it be? I told him I was going to say his name. Uh, two people. One, Corey Thomas. Uh, but but in all seriousness, Sean, Sean White, um, Sean's younger than me, but but Sean has has outgrown me uh, with experience. Like Sean, like we we and I talked about this earlier with James, but like we we talk a lot about just life. We talk about like what motivates each one of us, and, and I'm learning from Sean. Sean has has crossed so many different genres of work. Mm-hmm. In his professional life, like Sean never had it easy. He's so like easy he, to talk. To. He, sure. he never, he never, he and never. Still to this day. If you can get some words. Yeah, he never, he Sean, never had it you easy. So, so, you gotta squeeze him. Someone who says nothing but says a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's Sean. Absolutely. That's Sean. That's, that's what it is. So. Someone who says nothing says a lot. Says a lot. Mm-hmm. And that's Sean White. Yeah. Easy. And I'm sure easy. Sean respects that man. Yeah, for, for sure. 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 And we respect you, man. Um, thank you for coming out. Thank you for putting your boy on. Thank you all for being here and supporting us for uh, this dot podcast. And Jay, you can close us out. Yeah, uh, you never stumble upon the unexpected if you stick to the familiar. So go out there, work hard, support the community, and black women businesses. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go.